Good morning and welcome to Tuesday, the 5th of November 2024, to join with me, Reverend Andrew, for this recorded service of morning prayer. Our readings this morning are from some verses from Psalm 147 and a passage from Revelation chapter 2. We, we've now moved on from the Trinity season and into a sort of in-between season, uh, the season of saints, and hence why I've turned to red for today. But more will be revealed later. So we turn to morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. Give me praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Some verses from Psalm 147, verses 1 to 12. The response, great is our Lord and mighty in power. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Alleluia. How good it is to make music to our God. How joyful to honour him with praise. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers together the outcasts of Israel heals the brokenhearted, and binds up all their wounds. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His wisdom is beyond all telling. The Lord lifts up the poor, but casts down the wicked to the ground. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. Who makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve our needs. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. He gives the beasts their food and the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the power of a horse, no delight in human strength. But the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their trust in his steadfast love. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. A prayer. Compassionate God, as you know each star that you have created, so you know the secrets of every heart. In your loving mercy, bring to your table all who are fearful and broken, all who are wounded and needy, that our hungers may be satisfied in the city of your peace. Through Christ, who is our peace. And glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. <clears throat> Reading from Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. To the angel of the church in Ephesus writes, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. And to the angel in the church of Smyrna write, These are the words of the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, so that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have affliction. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. But anyone who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. And this is the word of the Lord. 
thanks be to God. We have some readings from Revelation over the next uh, four or so weeks. Um, and today we have an extract there from the beginning of, Act, of, of Revelation, which is about the letters, the seven letters to the seven churches, before it goes on to uh, that sense of vision uh, of, um, of heaven itself. So just focusing on uh, uh, to a couple of lines from those two uh, letters there that uh, Jesus writes to those two churches. I was picking up about um, how he demonstrates to them or points out to them uh, the love that they have lost. That first love that they had for him, they have lost as in the first church that's mentioned there. And I wonder if Jesus wrote a letter to us about our faith, what would he say? What would he say about uh, the state of our faith? Uh, what would he say about our prayer life, about our participation and engaging in worship? about our um, Bible study and Bible reading and reflection and prayer life and so on. I'm not expecting lots of answers necessarily. Um, and it's worth just reflecting, you know, how well is it doing? And then are we ready to truly suffer for Christ? I'm not expecting great heroic deeds that we have to go out and do, but just simply standing alongside and standing with gospel principles, faith, a faith foundation in our lives that speaks of the immense, deep, true love of God that, that works for the fullness and abundance of life. Are we truly uh, up to scratch on that? How well are we doing? Are we ready, as I say, to suffer for all that? We can't avoid being tested. That's part and parcel of living life. You know, we also have against tests that they always come along. But a test can be quite helpful. It can be a form of self-evaluation to see how well we are doing. What is the true intention of our heart, particularly uh, in our uh, focus on God's generosity and his great love? And the love of God that we're seeking to do best with, that should be the natural response uh, that we're doing um, for God, responding to his intense, deep love Love that he's shown us, of course, in his son, Jesus Christ, by uh, living and dying and rising for us. A love that overcomes everything. A love that overcomes death itself. So I encourage you, be refreshed, be renewed, be restored uh, through these weeks of November uh, as we progress our way through uh, Revelation and uh, think and reflect on the situation of our own personal faith. Thanks be to God. Let's move on now to the words of the Benedictus. I need to go into the screen share, pull the screen down, and here we go. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. For his holy prophets got promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now let us pray. So let us pray, indeed, for our churches and the congregations that we belong to, uh, be it in this benefice of Cherwell Valley or further afield. We pray that we may be alert always to the work of your Holy Spirit, Almighty God, reaching out to us through the uh, church life that we belong to, that we may always allow and enable your church to articulate your ways within the culture and environments where it is, that it may be a true burning, shining light, bringing light and life to all around. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for peace in our deeply divided and troubled world. We pray, Father, for the peacemakers, the peace explorers for the Middle East, 
Israel and her neighbors, and for Eastern Europe, Ukraine and Russia, and elsewhere in the world where there are where there are conflicts happening away from the headlines of the news. And today, Father, we pray especially for our friends and neighbours and cousins in the USA as they go to the polls. We pray, Father, for guidance as they make their decision for the uh, ruling of their own country, for the ruling of the leading country in the, in the democratic world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick and the suffering. We hold before you, Lord, those who have made their needs known to us. And Lord, they may find comfort and assurance of your presence alongside them. We also hold before you, Lord, the the many war and conflict injured, whose injuries and sufferings Mm -hmm. we see day after day on the news broadcasts. Lord, be with them, bring comfort, bring solace. In healing, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for ourselves. We pray, dear Lord, that we may be truly open, similarly to your Holy Spirit, to your promptings, to look again at our own personal faith and to restore that love, that passion that we have, that we have for you, where it has gone cold, or rather where it has cooled down and where it needs warming up again. So, Lord, may we be open to your guidance and wisdom in that way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And so we join together in the collect for today. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love, that, as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so to the closing words. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for sharing with me. I pray you'll have a good day ahead and I look forward to seeing you this time next week. Every blessing now. Goodbye.